Hey guys, how's it going? This is Ability here, and I'm back with the Hupper Mage. I'm playing 3v3 Colosseum because I wanted to show you guys what playing the Hupper Mage in a group scenario is like. So we are against Fogonaut, Sram, Ekaflip. Two of those, actually all three of those classes summon. So what I'm going to do is go pushback damage in this fight because pushback damage, um, actually I'm going to switch a trophy as well for a plus AP Prismerodite. Pushback damage is very good against classes that summon, and on my team we have an Uginak Legend and a Sedita Gold rank. Sedita is on a Rhine Needle, which makes me believe they are partly MP reduction, but that looks to be a strength AP reduction Rhine Needle if I'm not mistaken. I might be mistaken. Okay, so three protects. Let's see what the beginning fight chat says. Ursard, Falinster. Protect, 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 cloudy on dark magma. It's probably their SRAM. Yes. Okay, so the SRAM does not have a protect, the Fogernaut does not have a protect, and I do not have a protect. Their SRAM is strength. He is. He already activated a repelling and drift trap that he placed. So. He casts Plotter after, so his MP is accurate. That is quite annoying for me. I would appreciate a D-lock from teammates if they can. If not, I'm going to be wasting a lot of AP D-locking myself. So it looks like he's going for a single... Oh no, he's going to Earthquake. Yeah. Good mate. Uh, good, good play, sorry. So MP reduction. I'm guessing that is an MP reduction Rhine Needle and I'm just getting the colors wrong. Or maybe it's even Chameleon and, and those are their colors. Alright, so we've got a 2 MP Fogger and a 2 MP Echo. They have 50 MP res, 50, 60 MP res, and 30 MP res. So pretty high. So this must be um, a MP reduction set. He's not too worried about taking damage because of his shiny protect. My resistances are quite low because I took a range set rather than a resistance set. So my range is decent, but my... Wow, that was the chance spell that pulls diagonal. All right, so the Sedita is locked. Um, their SRAM is on a cloudy downturn next time he has a turn. So let's see, there's a lot of summons here that I want to get to. Nice, I got D-locked, that's perfect. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm, well, the line of sight just was lost by that. But it's good for the Sedita that he did that. So, I do not have line of sight of, okay, I can get MP from here. That's good. So if I step on this glyph, I get plus MP. Probably gonna use that and get as many glyphs on the floor as I can because that is what pushback Hupper Mage relies on for damage is putting runes on the floor. So what I'm gonna do here is hit this now I will hit him him propagation imprint res creation tribute and walk here because I don't have a protect, I don't want to get as close as my teammates are. They are safer than me getting that close to the Fogonaut in the Echo Flip. Although I believe the Fogonaut evolved the Bathyscaph, meaning that he is not a crit damage Fogonaut most likely. He's probably support. He still could be crit damage, but he's not focusing damage. So let's see, Repelling Drift, Weapon, how much MP he's got. So he is somewhere in this area. Mass Grave. Rough. I should have gotten, gotten farther, farther from the double, I suppose, but the teammates would be able to activate the trap as well, even if I did move this way. So they are both infected. The SRAM is the only one on their team not infected, as well as the double. I'm able to push this double with polarity. However, I'm not able to manifestation to any of my fire glyphs. So if the enemy is positioned properly, I may not be able to deal damage this turn. Oh wow. He hit him with AoE. Oh no, he didn't. He hit him with an actual spell. Nice. So I can 
deal damage to that SRAM. He's got 21 pushback resistance, the Fogrenaut has zero pushback resistance, and the Ekka also has zero. Alright, so he's got shield, no crits on um, the Bathyscaf spell, whatever that's called. First aid, I believe. Yes, no crits on first aid. If it crit, they would each get plus 3 AP and 700 shield, so it's really good that it did not crit. So I'm guessing we should target the SRAM. Hopefully no one on my team or their team blocks me in any way because right now I can simply polarity and then walk this way. Nice, I need that cell. So the SRAM is in no elemental state, I believe. Yes, no elemental state. The reason I had to check, I know I haven't hit him with any spells, but I cast elemental shield on myself, which makes it so that if they hit me, they get an elemental state. But this ram has not hit me with a damaging ability yet. So it seems they are going for our Sedita, which is fine. Not for the Sedita though. Okay, so it's my turn. So I'm gonna start it off with an imprint. Now I will polarity and do this. Use another polarity here and I will release for 580 and then runic propulsion for 3k and I will lock him in so that he cannot go for the Sedita as easily because the Sedita seems to be who they're focusing and I have elemental shield on as well as full HP. Unfortunate that I couldn't kill. If they had moved both of these I would have been able to kill because the imprint would have um, generated more runes, but because those stayed stationary, my damage was decreased. So even though it says that our Uginak has a protect, he actually does not. It's a glitch. We're on turn three. Wow. Very strong. So I guess it was poor for me to go there, but it saved our Sedita's life, I believe. So we've got that going for us. So if I had been able to kill him, and if these had moved, we would have a full HP Uginak rather than a one-third HP Uginak. One-fourth, actually. So... Yeah, the Protect says he has shield points, but because it's... Oh, can he not kill? No, I'm sure that he can. Oh no, he decided to damage split between the three of us instead of kill. Um, I'm guessing he could not kill, which is the reason for doing that. He seems to be at least a tri-element, say Ditto, uh, meaning that he's not chance, he's the other three elements. So yeah, this SRAM just became much harder to kill because the Foggernaut gets a turn. Our Uginak still should be able to, especially with the three of us damage sharing. Oh, so that's interesting. It does not... Oh no, okay, that was an intel spell. Um, I was going to say it doesn't trigger elemental shield to hit through damage sharing, but it very well might because he was already in the fire state, so it wouldn't have had an effect anyways. Alright, so SRAM should die. Let's see, he's got 5 AP after hitting that. Hopefully he dies. If the Ekka gets a turn with him, it's going to be really bad. <laughs> that's so, that's really bad. Please have Crocobur. He doesn't though. Yeah, the Ekka flip is going to make it hard to kill him with repercussion, probably, and Ekka's luck. Ekka's luck won't affect my damage, but I'm also locked and I'm not able to get out very easily. You cannot polarity the drill, meaning that I cannot swap with it. I could sunlace it, maybe? To be honest, I don't even think I can do that. So, how am I going to kill this SRAM? Yeah, I don't think I can. Mmm... I don't even have a good plan right now. Okay. I'm going to imprint, do this, Telerik Wave, Polarity, Tectonic Breach, Tectonic Breach, and Runic Repulsion. I don't believe it will kill. Oh, it did. Perfect. 
All right, so that was very good that I was able to kill the SRAM there. I wasn't sure if it would be enough damage because I had to waste so much delocking myself. Potentially the better move could have been fire manifestation after imprint. In fact, I should have done that. So rather than do polarity, um, telluric wave polarity here, I should have imprinted, creationed, and fire manifestationed. Because what imprint does is even though there are, even though my last spell may not have been a fire spell, my creation would be reverted to an intel creation because there are things in the fire state. So now we have a echo flip as well as a foggernaut to deal with. The foggernaut will be infected here, and the mad doll infected the echo flip here. So we got some MP dodge there, which is all right. What is the foggernaut going to do? I believe we still have damage sharing. We don't. Okay, so damage sharing wore off this turn. I could have healed the Uginak on my turn. However, killing that SRAM was pretty essential seeing as the SRAM was a Hamateur SRAM and he also had a Cloudy Dofus. So it's a very deadly combo with those two. Right, does our Ugi get another turn? No, I don't believe he does. Um, unless he has Sparkling Silver, but I believe no one did. Oh, my ending spot was awful. Should have realized that the Trawler would have pulled me in. Wasn't paying attention to it. I was too focused on the fact that the SRAM died to watch the Trawler. Hmm. So this is far from a one match. In fact, it's not looking very good. Uh, they're not focusing me still. I have Elemental Shield for the Sedita. Okay, so that's minus 5 range. Gotta keep that in mind. Who should I be going for? Zero pushback res, zero pushback res. So... Let's see. I am going to... Do this. Oh my gosh, I'm lagging. Oh. Wow. My FPS dropped. And I wasn't able to finish my turn. That's unfortunate. I guess I should have started my turn. Started moving earlier than that. Oh, that feels really bad. That was a very important turn. Um, because they both would have taken pushback damage. And it's really bad that I missed it. Shoot. I say Dita will not get another turn. And I'm in line with the Trawler again, and I am not locking this Foggernaut. So, I'm gonna be locked again. And I'm not going to be able to kill anyone. So the, the Foggernaut actually does not have an, a great amount of MP. He could Grafnel for one cell and get line of sight of the Cedita. I'm not sure if that's what he'll do or not. Looks like he's just hitting me. Oh, he didn't move either. So the Trawler should pull us both in and give me a wall to push back with. And he also did not get Bathyscaph shields. And the Mad Doll is blocking the Bathyscaph from the Echo Flip. Echo Flip has 3 MP. Okay, so that makes it harder for me to push back. Hmm, not too hard though. So the Trawler is going to block my MP use. But they kind of lined up for me there, which is nice. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to deal a large amount of damage, however. I'm lagging again, this is quite rough. So I won't kill either of them, I don't believe. Oh, I did. Okay, that's good. So I don't know where I should end for this Ekka. Um, it's going to be, I do have resistance, so it's possible that I will win this, but since they know that I'm pushback, it's quite easy for them to 
avoid me taking or them taking pushback damage like if they end here for example there's very little I can do or there that would be even worse for me yeah so it, it's rough to catch them now they could have done a better job with where they ended to be honest so now if I imprint I will get a fire creation and now I can tribute And I can do this and Runic Repulsion, but it won't be enough to kill. But it's... Um, they probably have Repercussion up again. Hey guys, this is Ability in Post-Production. So it occurred to me while editing this video that I could have killed the Echo Flip during this turn. What that would have been, if we rewind to when I took the Fire Manifestation in, instead of using Tribute here, I should have run Diagonal to the Echo Flip, used Polarity to remove the Fire State, which would then put them on a new cell, so that when I use Tectonic Breach, a third Glyph would appear on the map, then I can use Polarity to do damage, and then I could use Runic Repulsion and it would have killed them, because there would have been three Glyphs on the map, rather than just the two. But it's... Mm, they probably have repercussion up again if I had to guess I don't know the cooldown exactly but they have healing kit in here and they might get repercussion and because all the summons died along with the foggernaut my damage is now severely decreased push back oh <laughs> don't have repercussion there it is so hard match to win right now intelligence echo flip so they can heal themselves with other spells as well such as uh, heads or tails and they deal decent damage as well so, it's going to be, a, ooh, okay, I thought he was going to block my walking path. It's going to be a tough fight, for sure. But it is winnable. Um, so what I'm going to do here is imprint, polarity, this, this. Creation, Polarity, Repulsion, and unfortunately the cat died, meaning that they took very little pushback damage from it. That was not a very good turn for me, I should have healed myself instead. In fact, well, the fact that I missed one of my turns from not starting it soon enough combined with some FPS drop, combined with the fact that that was a bad turn, may be the reason that we lose this fight. Two bad turns from me. Yeah. I probably have at least one ebony as well, I do. So I believe I die this turn. And if I don't, I don't kill him anyways. Yeah. So it was a close fight. We could have won. It was my misplays that lost us that fight, in fact. Um, combined with the fact that we were unable to finish off the SRAM that I did a lot of damage to for two of my teammates' turns. I don't believe that's their fault, I think it was uh, well played by the enemy teams. If our Seidito was able to kill the SRAM on their turn, it was a misplay. However, if the Seidi was unable to kill the SRAM with the damage that they had, then it was well played by him, because the damage sharing that he did enabled both of my teammates to survive a little bit longer. And then the Uginak was unable to kill because the Foggernaut got a turn in between and was able to shield and lock the Uginak. So those plays are why we lost. However, if I did not miss that one turn, I would say it was a guaranteed win. So it was a tough fight, it was a close fight, but all in all, Pushback Upper Mage is not very strong versus single targets like the Echo Flip at the end there, which is why I was unable to kill him. And it is very strong versus multiple targets, which is like when the Foggernaut had all of his turrets out. That is a uh, Pushback Hopper Mage in a nutshell, lots of targets makes a happy Pushback Hopper Mage, and one target makes a sad Pushback Hopper Mage. I hope you guys enjoyed, this has been Ability, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.